I mean, Master Slender, what would you do with me? Truly, for mine own part, I would little or nothing with you. My father and uncle hath made motions, if it be my luck. So, if not, happy man be his dull. They can tell you how things go better than I can. You may ask your father. Here he comes. Now, Master Slender, love him, daughter Anne. What how now? What does Master Fenton here? You wrong me, sir, thus still to haunt my house. I told you, sir, my daughter is disposed of. Nay, Master Page, be not impatient. A good Master Fenton, come not to my child. She is no match for you. <laughs> sir, will you hear me? No, good Master Fenton. Come, Master Shallow. Come, Sun Slender, in. Knowing my mind, you wrong me, Master Fenton. Speak to Mistress Page. Good Mistress Page, for that I love your daughter in such a righteous fashion as I do, perforce against all checks, rebukes, and manners, I must advance the colors of my love and not retire. Let me have your good will. Good mother, do not marry me to yon fool. I mean it not. I seek you a better husband. Oh, that's my master, master doctor. <laughs> Alas, I'd rather be set quick into the earth uh, and, and bowed to death with turnips. Come, trouble not yourself. The good master Fenton, I will not be your friend nor enemy. My daughter will I question how she loves you. And as I find her, so am I affected. Till then, a farewell, sir. She must needs go in. Her father will be angry. Farewell, gentle mistress. Farewell, man. This is my doing now. <laughs> Nay, said I, will you cast away your child on a fool and a position? Look on Master Fenton. This is my doing. <laughs> I thank thee, and I pray thee once tonight, Give my sweet man this ring. There's for thy pain. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, now heaven send thee good fortune. Oh, a kind heart he had. A woman would run through fire and water for such a kind heart. But yet, I would my master had Mistress Anne. Or I would Master Slender had her. Or in sooth, I would Master Fenton had her. I will do what I can for them all three, for so I have promised, and I'll be as good as my word. But especially for Master Fenton. Well, I must another errand to Sir John Falstaff for my two mistresses. What a beast I am to slack it. Bardolph, I say. Here, sir. <sighs> Go fetch me a quart of sack. Uh, put a toast in it. Have I lived to be carried in a basket like a, a bar of butcher's offal and thrown in the Thames? Ugh. Well, if I be served another such trick, I'll have my brains taken out and buttered and give them a dog for a New Year's gift. <laughs> The rogues slighted me into the river with as little remorse as they would have drowned a blind bitch's puppies. Fifteen in the litter. Oh, and uh, you may know by my size, I have a kind of alacrity in sinking. Uh, if the bottom were as deep as hell, I should down. I had been drowned, but that the shore was shelvy and shallow, the death that I abhor, for the water swells a man. And what a thing should I have been when I had swelled! Oh, oh by the Lord, I should have been a mountain of mummy! Here's Mistress Quickly, sir, to speak with you. Oh, come, let me pour in some sack to the Thames water, for my belly's as 
cold as I had swallowed snowballs for pills to cool the rains. Uh, Corin. Come in, woman. Oh, by your leave, I cry you mercy. Give your worship good morrow. Take away these chalices. Go brew me a puddle of sack today. Finally. With egg, sir? Simple of itself. Oh, no, pull its sperm in my brewage. How now? Oh, Mary, sir, I come to your worship from Mistress Ford. Oh, Mistress Ford? I have had Ford enough. I was thrown into the Ford. I have my belly full of Ford. Well, alas, the day, good heart, that was not her fault. She does so take on with her men. They mistook their erection. <laughs> so did I mine. Oh. Uh, to build a foolish woman's promise. Well, she laments, sir, for it, so that it would yearn your heart to see it. Her husband goes this morning a birding. She desires you once more to come to her between eight and nine. I must carry her word quickly. She'll make you amends, I warrant you. Well, I will visit her. So, and bid her think what a man is. <laughs> Let her consider his frailty and then judge of my merit. I will tell her. <laughs> Do so uh, between nine and ten, say uh, so. Eight and nine, sir. Oh, well, be gone. I will not miss her. Peace be with you, sir. I marvel I hear not of Master Brook. He sent me word to stay within. I like his money well. Oh, here he comes. God bless you, sir. Oh, now, Master Brook, you have come to know what hath passed between me and Ford's wife. That indeed, Sir John, is my business. Master Brook, I will not lie to you. I was at her house the hour she appointed me. <laughs> and uh, sped you, sir? Very ill-favoredly, Master Brook. <laughs> uh, how so, sir? Did she change her determination? No, Master Brook, but the peaking Cornuto, her husband, Master Brook, Dwelling in a continual alarm of jealousy <laughs> comes me in the instant of our encounter after, which we had embraced, kissed, protested, and as it were, spoke the prologue of our <laughs> comedy, and at his heels, a, a rabble of his companions, yuck, yuck, thither provoked and instigated by his distemper, and forsooth to search his house for his wife's love. What? While you were there? While well, I there? was... While I was there. And did he search for you and could not find you? You shall hear. As good luck would have it, uh, comes in one Mistress Page, uh, gives intelligence of Ford's approach, and in her invention and Ford's wife's distraction, they conveyed me into a buck basket. A buck basket? By the Lord, a buck basket. Uh, rammed me in there with... Foul shirts and smocks, uh, socks, uh, foul stockings, <laughs> greasy napkins. That, Master Brook, there were the rankest compound of villainous smell that ever offended nostril. And how long lay you there? Yeah, you shall hear, Master Brook, what I have suffered to bring this woman to evil for your good. Mm. Being thus crammed in the basket, a couple of Ford's knaves, his hinds, were called forth by their mistress to carry me in the name of foul clothes to Datchet Lane. They took me on their shoulders, met the jealous knave, their master in the door, who asked them once or twice what they had in their basket. <laughs> I quaked for fear lest the lunatic knave would have searched it. But fate, <laughs> ordaining he should be a cuckold, <laughs> held his hand. Well, on he went for a search, and away I went for foul clothes. <laughs> That marks a sequel, Master Brook. I suffered the pangs of three several deaths. First, an intolerable fright to be detected with a jealous rotten bellwether. Next, to be compassed 
like a good Bilbo in the circumference of a peck, hilt to point, heel to head, and then to be stopped in like, like a strong distillation with stinking clothes that fretted in their own grace. Ah. Think of that. A man of my kidney, think of that, that am subject to heat as butter. A man of continual dissolution and thaw. It was a miracle to escape suffocation. And in the height of this bath, when I was more than half steamed in grease like a Dutch dish to be thrown into the Thames and cooled, glowing hot in that surge, like a horseshoe. Think of that. Hissing hot. Think of that, Master Brook. Think good sadness, sir. I'm sorry for my sake that you have suffered all this. My suit then is desperate. You'll undertake her no more. Oh, Master Brook. I will be thrown into Etna, as I have been into Thames, ere I will leave her thus. Her husband is gone this morning, a birding. <laughs> I have received from her another embassy of meeting. Twixt eight and nine is the hour, Master Brooke. Tis past eight already, oh, sir. Is it? Oh, <laughs> then I will address me to my appointment. <laughs> Come at me at your convenient leisure, and, uh, you shall know how I speed, and the conclusion shall be crowned with your enjoying her. Mm -mm -mm. Adieu. You shall have her, Master Brook. Master Brook, you shall cuckold Ford. Huh. 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 Is this a vision? Is this a dream? Do I... Sleep? Master Ford, awake! Master, awake! Master Ford, there's a hole made in your best coat. Master Ford, this to be married. This tis to have linen and buck baskets. Well, I will proclaim myself what I am. I will now take the lecher. He is at my house. He cannot escape me. Tis impossible he should. He cannot creep into a halfpenny purse, nor into a pepper box. But lest the devil that guides him should aid him, I will search impossible places. Though what I am I cannot avoid, yet to be what I would not shall not make me Tame, if I have horns to make one mad, then the proverb go with me. I'll be horn mad. Yeah. Is he a master of fools already, thinks thou? Sure he is by this, or will be presently. But truly, he is very courageous, mad about his throwing into the water. Mistress Ford desires you come suddenly. I'll be with her by and by. I'll but bring my young man here to school. Oh, look where his master comes. It is a plain day, I see. How now, Sir Hugh? No school today? No! Master Slender is let the... Boys, leave to play, man. Oh, blessing of his heart. <sighs> you, my husband says my son profits nothing in the world at his book. I pray you, ask him some questions in his accidents. Come hither, Wilhelmina. Hold up your head. Come. Come on, Sarah. Hold up your head. Answer your master. Be not afraid. Let me up. How many numbers is in nouns? Two. Oh, truly, I thought there'd been one number more because they say odds nouns. <laughs> Peace your tattlings. What is fair, Wilhelmina? Pulcher. Polecats? 
There are fairer things than polecat, sure. <laughs> you are a very simplicity woman. I pray you, peace. What is lapis, really, Mina? A stone. <laughs> and what is stone, will you, Mina? <laughs> a pebble. No, it is lapis. <laughs> I pray you, remember in your praying. Lapis. That is good, William Mina. What, what is he, William Mina, that does lend articles? Articles are borrowed of the pronoun and be thus declined singulariter nomen of TVO hic hec hoc. Nomen TVO hig hog hog. Pray you mark. Genta vio chris. Well, what is your accusative case? Accusativo hink. I pray you have your remembrance, child. Accusativo hung, hang hog. Hang hog is Latin for bacon, I warrant you. <laughs> Leave your prabbles, woman. What is the focative case, Williamina? Oh. Vocativo? Oh. Remember, really, mean a focative is correct. Oh, and that's a good root. Omen forbear. Peace. What is your genitive case plural, Wilhelmina? Genitive case? I. Uh, genitive. Horum, harum, harum. Vengeance of Jimmy's case. Fly on her. Never name her child if she's a whore. For shame, omen. Oh, you do ill to teach the child such words. But he teaches her to hick and to hack, and, which they'll do fast enough of themselves, and to call horum fie upon you. Omen, art thou lunatics? Hast thou no understandings for thy cases and... The numbers of the genders. Thou art as foolish Christian creatures as I would desire. Pretty, hold thy peace. Show me now, with you mean, some declensions of your pronouns. Uh, oh, forsooth, I, I have forgot. It is qui. Que quad. If you forgot your quees, your quays, and your quads, you must be preaches. Go your way and play go. He's a better scholar than I thought he was. He is a, a good sprag memory. Farewell, Mistress Page. Adieu, good sir Hugh. Get you home, boy. Come. You stay too long. Mistress Ford, <laughs> your sorrow hath eaten up my sufferance. <laughs> I see you are obsequious in your love, and uh, I profess requital to a hair's breadth, not only, Mistress Ford, in the simple office of love, but in the accoutrement, complement, and ceremonie of it. <laughs> but are you sure of your husband now? He's a birding sweet, Sir John. What ho, gossip forward, what ho? Step into the chamber, Sir John. How now, sweetheart? Who's at home beside yourself? Why, none but mine own people. Indeed? No, certainly. Speak louder. Truly, I am so glad you have nobody here. Why? Why, woman, your husband is in his old loons again. He so takes on yonder with my husband, so rails against all married mankind, succors all Eve's daughters of what complexion soever, and so buffets himself in the forehead, crying, peer out, peer out, that any madness I ever get behold seem but tameless. Civility and patience to this, but distemper he is in now. Oh, I am glad the fat knight is not here. 
Why does he talk of him? Of none but him and swears he was carried out the last time he searched for him in a basket. Protest to my husband he is now here and has drawn him and the rest of the company from their sport to make another experiment of his suspicion. Oh, but I am glad the knight is not here. Now he shall see his own foolery. How near is he, Mistress Page? Hard by at street end. He'll be here anon. I am undone. The knight is here. Why, then, you are utterly sh shamed, and he's but a dead man. What a woman are you? Away with him, away with him, but a shame than murder. Which way should he go? How should I bestow him? Shall I put him in the basket again? No, 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 I'll come no more in the basket, no. May, may I not go out ere he come? <laughs> Alas, three of Master Ford's brothers watch the door with pistols that none shall issue out. Otherwise, you might slip away ere he come, but what make you here? Oh, what shall I do? I'll creep up in a chimney. <sighs> well, they always used to discharge their burning pieces. Creep into the kiln. Where is it? He will seek there, on my word. Press, coffer, chest, trunk, well, vault. But he hath an abstract for the remembrance of such places and goes to them by his note. There is no hiding you in the house. Well, I'll go out then. If you go out in your own semblance, you die, Sir John. <clears throat> Unless you go out disguised. How might we disguise him? Alas, the day. I know not. There is no woman's gown big enough for him. Otherwise, he might put on a hat, a muffler, and a kerchief, and no escape. Well, good heart, devise something. Uh, any extremity rather than a mischief. <laughs> my maid's aunt, the fat woman of Brentford, has a gown above. On oh, my word, it will serve him. She's as big as he is. And there's a thumbed hat and a muffler, too. Run up, Sir John. Go, go, sweet Sir John. Mistress Page and I will look some linen for your head. Quick, quick, we'll come dress you straight. Put on the gown the, put on the, gown the while. Run. I would my husband would meet up in, with him in this shape. I cannot abide the old woman of Brantford. She swears she's a witch, forbade for her own house and hath threatened to beat her. Heaven guide him to my husband's cudgel and the devil guide his cudgel afterwards. But is my husband coming? Aye, in good sadness is he, and talks of the basket too, howsoever he have had intelligence. We'll try that, but I'll appoint my men to carry the basket again, to meet him at the door with it as they did last time. Nay, but he'll be here presently. Let's go, dress him like the witch of Brentford. I'll first direct my men what they shall do with the basket. Go up, I'll bring linen for him straight. Hang him, dishonest varlet. We cannot misuse him enough. We'll leave a proof by that which we'll do. Wise may be merry and yet honest too. We do not act that often, jest and laugh. Tis all but true, still swine eats all the draught. Go, sirs, take the basket again on your shoulders. Your master is hard at the door. If he bid you set it down, obey him. Quickly, dispatch. Come, come, take it up. I haven't it be not full of night again. I hope not. I'd have leaf as bear so much lead. Aye, but if it prove true, Master Page, have you any way then to unfool me again? Set down the basket, villain. Somebody call my wife, youth, in a basket. Oh, you pandale rascals. There's a knot, a gang, a pack, a conspiracy against me. Now shall the devil be shamed. What? Wife, I say, come, come forth. Behold what honest clothes you sent forth to bleaching. Why, this passes, Master Ford. You are not to go loose any longer. You must be pinioned. Why, this is lunatics. 
This is mad as mad dog. Indeed, Master Ford, this is not well, indeed. So say I too. Sir, come hither, mistress. Ford, mistress. Ford, the honest. Woman, the modest. Wife, the virtuous. Creature that hath the jealous fool to herself. Her husband, I suspect without cause, mistress. Do I? Heaven be my witness you do if you suspect me in any dishonesty. Well said, brazen face. Hold it out. Come forth. Sir. This passes. Are you not ashamed? Let the clothes alone. I shall find you. Come on. Here's unreasonable. Will you take up your wife's clothes? Come away. Empty the basket, I say. Why, man, why? Master Page, as I am a man, there was one conveyed out of my house yesterday in this basket. Why may there not be here again today in my house? I am sure he is. My intelligence is True, my jealousy is reasonable. Pluck me out all the linen. If you find a man in there, he shall die a flea's death. Here's no man. By my fidelity, this is not well, Master Ford. This wrongs you. Well, he's not here. I seek for no, no, nowhere else but in uh, your brain. Help me search my house this one time. If I find not what I seek, show no color for my extremity. Let me forever be your table sport. Let them say of me as jealous as Ford that searched a hollow walnut for his wife's lemon. Satisfy me once more. Once more, search with me. What ho, Mistress Page? Come you and the old woman down. My husband will come into the chamber. Old woman? What old woman's that? Why, it is my maid's aunt of Brentford. A uh, witch, a uh, queen, a uh, old cousining queen. Have I not forbid her in my house? She comes of errands, does she? We are simple men. We do not know what's brought to pass under the profession of fortune telling. She works by charms, by spells, by the figure, and such daubery as this is. Beyond our element, we know nothing. Come down, you witch, you hag, you. Come down, I say. Nay, good sweet husband, good gentleman, let him not strike the old woman. Come, Mother Pride, come, give me your hand. I'll patter out of my door, you witch, you rag, you Baggage, you pole cat, you run in, out, out, I'll conjure you, I'll fortune tell you. Are you not ashamed? I think you've killed the poor woman. Nay, he will do it. Tis a goodly credit for you. Hang her, witch. Oh, yay, yeah, and no, I think the woman is a witch indeed. I like not when a woman is a is a great beard. I spy a great beard under her muffler. <laughs> Will you follow? Gentlemen, I beseech you, follow. See but the issue of my jealousy. If I cry out thus upon no trail, never trust me when I open again. Uh, let's obey his humor a little further. Come, gentlemen. 
Trust me, he beat him most pitifully. Nay, by thy mast he did not. He beat him most unfitifully, methought. I'll have the cudgel hallowed and hung over the altar. You'd have done meritorious service. Thank you. May we, with the warrant of womanhood and the witness of a good conscience, pursue him with any further revenge. The spirit of wantonness is, sure, scared out of him. If the devil have not in men be simple, but fine and recovery, he will never, I think, in the way of waste, attempt us again. Shall we tell our husbands how we have served him? Yes, by all means, if it be but to escape the figures out of your husband's brains. If he can find in their hearts the poor and virtuous fat knight shall be in any further addicted, we too sh shall still be the ministers. I'll warrant they'll have him publicly shamed. Methinks there would be no period to the jest should he not be publicly shamed. Come, to the forge with it, then shape it. I would not have things cool. Sir, the Germans desire to have three of your horses. The Duke himself will be tomorrow at court, and they are going to meet him. What Duke should that be comes so secretly? I hear not of him in the court. Let me speak with the gentlemen. They speak English. Aye, sir. I'll call them to you. They shall have my horses, but I'll make them pay. I'll sauce them. They have had my house a week at command. I've turned away my other guests. They must come off. I'll sauce them. Come. So, Sir Hugh, what think you? Tis one of the best discretions of a woman as ever I did look upon, man. And did he send you both these letters at Within a quarter of an hour? Pardon me, wife. Henceforth, do what thou wilt. I rather would suspect the sun with cold than thee with wantonness. Now doth thy honour stand in him that was of late an heretic as firm as faith. Tis well, tis well, no more. Be not as extreme in submission as in offence, but let our plot go forward. Let our wives yet once again, to make us public sport, appoint a meeting with this old fat fellow where we may take him and disgrace him for it. <laughs> there is no better way than that they spoke of. Now, to send him word they'll meet him in the park at midnight? <laughs> fie, fie, he'll never come. You say he has been thrown in the rivers and has been grievously beaten as an old woman. Methinks there should be terrors in him that he should not come. Methinks his, his flesh is punished. He shall have no desires. So think I too. Devise but how you use him when he comes and let us two devise to bring him thither. There is an old tale goes that Herne the Hunter Sometime I keep her here in Windsor Forest. Doth all the winter time at still midnight walk around about an oak with great ragged horns, and here he blasts the tree and takes the cattle and makes milk kind yield blood and shakes a chain in a most hideous and dreadful manner. You have heard of such a spirit, and well, you know the superstitious, isle headed eld, received and delivered to our age, this tale of Herne the Hunter for a truth. Why, yet there want not many that do fear and deep of night to work, walk by this herd's oak. Wait, but what of this? Mary, this is our device, that Falstaff at the oak shall meet with us. Well, let it not be doubted, but he'll come. And in this shape, when you have brought him thither, what shall be done with him? 
What is your plot? That likewise have we thought upon, and thus, Nan Page, my daughter, and my little son, and three or four more of their growth, all dressed like urchins, oofs, and fairies, green and white, with rounds of waxen tapers in their heads and rattles in their hands. Upon a sudden, as false doth, she and I are newly met. Let them from forth a soapit rush at once with some diffused song. Upon their sight, we too in great amazement will fly, then let them all encircle him about, and fairy like to pinch the unclean knight and ask him why that our fairy revel in their so sacred parts he dares to tread and shake profane. And, and, till he tell the truth, let the supposed fairies pinch him sound and burn him with their tapers. The truth be known, we'll all present ourselves, dishorn the spirit, and mock him home to Windsor. The children must be practised well to do this, or they'll ne'er do it. I will teach the children their behaviours, and I will be like a, a Japanese also, to, to burn the night with my tabor. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, that will be excellent. I'll go by them visits. And my nan shall be the queen of all the fairies, finely attired in a robe of white. That silk will I go by. And in that time shall Master Slender steal my nan away and marry her at Eden. Go, send to false Jastry. Hey, I'll to him in the name of Brooke. He'll tell me all his purpose. Sure, he'll come. Fear not you that. Go get his properties and tricking for our fairies. Let us about it. It is admiral pleasures and fairy honest knaveries. Yeah. Go, Mr. Sport, send quickly to Sir John to know his mind. Owl to the doctor, he hath my good will, and none but he, to marry with Nan Page. The slender, though well landed, is an idiot, and he, my husband, best of all effects. The doctor is well moneyed and his friends potentate court. He, none but he, shall have her, though 20,000 worthy are come to crave her. What wouldst thou have, boar? What thick skin? Speak, breathe, discuss, brief, short, quick, snap. Very, sir, I come to speak with Sir John Falstaff from Master Slender. There's his chamber, his house, his castle, his standing bed and truckle bed. Tis painted about the store of the prodigal, fresh and new. Go, knock and call. He'll speak like an anthropophagian under the knock, I say. Oh, woman, a fat woman gone up into his chamber. Uh, I'll be so bold as to stay, sir. Let's see, you know, come down. I come to speak with her indeed. Ha, huh, a fat woman. The knight may be robbed, I'll call. Bully knight, bully Sir John. Speak from thy lungs military, art thou there? It is thine host, thine Ephesian calls. How oh, now, mine host? There's a bohemian tartar tarries the coming down of thy fat woman. Let her descend, bully, let her descend. My chambers are honorable. Fie, privacy, fie. There was, mine host, an old fat woman even with me now, but uh, she's gone. Uh, pray you, sir, was not the wise woman of uh, Bradford? I marry, was it, muscle shell? What would you with her? Uh, my master, sir. My master Slender sent to her, seeing her go through the streets to know, you know, sir, whether one nim, sir, that beguiled him of a chain, had the chain, or no. I spake with the old woman about it. And uh, what said she, I pray you, sir? Mary, she says that the very same man that beguiled Master Slender of his chain cousined him of it. I would have could have spoken with the woman herself. I had other things to have spoken to her, with her, too, from him. What are they? Let us know. Uh, I may not conceal them, sir. Conceal them, or thou diest. Yeah. Why, sir? Uh -huh. Well, they, they were nothing about but about Mistress Anne Page. To know if it were my master's fortune to, uh, you know, have her, man. 
or no? Tis, tis her fortune. Alexa. To have her or no. Go, say the woman told me so. May I be so bold to say so, sir? I, sir, like who more bold? I thank your worship. I, I shall make my master glad with these tidings. Thou art clerkly, thou art clerkly, Sir John. Was there a wise woman with thee? Aye, that there was, mine host, one that hath taught me more wit than ever I learned before in my life. And I paid nothing for it neither, but was paid for my learning. Out, alas, sir, cousinage, near cousinage. Where be my horses? Speak well of them, Varletto. Run away with the cousiners, for so soon as I came upon Eaton, they threw me off from behind, <clears throat> one of them, and into a slough of mire, and set spurs, and away like three German devils, three Dr. Faustuses. They are gone but to meet the Duke villain. Do not say they be fled. Germans are honest men. Where is mine host? What is the matter, sir? Oh, have a care for your entertainments. There's a friend of mine come to town, tells me there is three cousin Germans that have cousins all the hosts of re readings of Maidenhead, <laughs> of Colnbrook, of horses and money. I tell you for goodwill, look you. You are wise and full of gibes and flouting stocks, and tis not convenient. You should be cousined. Fare you well. There is mine host, the Jartier. Here, Master Doctor, in perplexity and doubtful dilemma. I cannot tell what is that. But it is telling me that you make ground preparation for a Germany? By my thought, there is no duke that the court is no to come. I tell you, for goodwill, adieu. Hue and cry, villain, go, assist me, knight, I am undone. Fly, run, hue and cry, villain, I am undone. I would all the world might be cousin, for I have been cousined and beaten too. If it should come to the year of the court, how I have been transformed, and how my transformation hath been washed and cudgeled, uh, they would melt me out of my fat drop by drop and liquor fishermen's boots with me. I warrant they would whip me with their fine wits until I was as crestfallen as a dried pear. I never prospered since I forswore myself at Primero. <coughs> well, if my wind were big enough, I would repent. Oh, now whence come you? From the two parties, forsooth. Ah, oh, the devil take one party and his damn the other. And so they shall both be bestowed. I have suffered more for their sakes, more than the villainous inconstancy of man's disposition is able to bear. And have they not suffered? Yes, <clears throat> I warrant, especially one of them, Mr. Ford Goodhart, is beaten black and blue that you cannot see a white spot about her. Well, what tellest thou me of black and blue? Well, I was beaten myself into all the colors of the rainbow, and I was like to be apprehended for the witch of Brentford, but that my admirable dexterity of wit, my counterfeiting the actions of an old woman, <laughs> delivered me, uh, the knave constable had set me in the stocks, and the common stocks for a witch. <laughs> Sir, uh, let me speak with you in your chamber. Yeah. So you shall hear how things go, and I warrant to your content. Here is a letter will say somewhat. <laughs> oh, good hearts, what a do there is to bring you together. Sure, one of you does not serve God that well, since you're so crossed. Come up, 
into my chamber. Master Fenton, talk not to me. My mind is heavy, I will give over all. Yet hear me speak. Assist me in my purpose. And as I am a gentleman, I'll give thee a hundred pound in gold more than your lot. I will hear you, Master Fenton, and I will at the least keep your counsel. From time to time, I have acquainted you with the dear love I bear to fair Anne Page, who mutually hath answered my affection so far forth as herself might be her chooser, even to my wish. I have a letter from her of such contents as you will wonder at. The mirth whereof so larded with my matter that neither singling can be manifested without the show of both. Fat Falstaff hath a great scene, the image of the jest I'll show you here at large. Hark, good mine host, tonight at Hearn's Oak, just twixt twelve and one, must my sweet Nan present the fairy queen. The purpose why is here. In which disguise, while other jests are something rank on foot, her father hath commanded her to slip away with splendor, and with him at Eton um, immediately to marry. She hath consented. Now, sir, her mother, ever strong against that match, and firm for Dr. Caius, hath appointed that he shall likewise shuffle her away. And while other sports are tasking of their minds, and the deanery where a priest attends straight marry her. To this, her mother's plot, she, seemingly obedient, likewise hath made a promise to the doctor. Now, thus it rests. Her father means she, she shall be all in white, and in that habit, while Slender sees this time, to take her by the hand and bid her go, she shall go with him. Her mother hath intended, the better to denote her to the doctor, for they must all be masked and visited, that quaint in green she shall be loose and robed, with ribbons pendant flaring about her head. And when the doctor spies this vantage right, to pinch her by the hand, and on that token, the maid hath given consent to go with him. Which means she to deceive, father or mother? Both, my good host, to go along with me, and here it rests that you'll procure the vicar to stay for me at church twixt twelve and one, and in the lawful name of Marion, to give our hearts united ceremony. Well, husband your device all to the vicar. Bring you the maid, you shall not lack a priest. So shall I evermore be bound to thee. Besides, I'll make a present recompense. Prithee, no more prattling. Go, I'll hold. This is the third time. I hope good luck lies in odd numbers. <laughs> Away, go. They say there is divinity in odd numbers, <laughs> either in nativity, chance, or death. Away! <laughs> I'll provide you a chain, and I'll do what I can to get you a pair of horns. Away, I say. Ah, time wears. Now hold up your head and mince. Oh, how now, Master Brook Cha-Ching! <laughs> Master Brook, the matter will be known tonight or never. Be you in the park about uh, midnight at Hearn's Oak, and you shall see wonders. <gasps> Went you not to her yesterday, sir, as you told me you had appointed? Uh, I went to her, Master Brook, as you see. <laughs> like a poor old man, but I came from her, Master Brook, like a poor old woman. Oh. That same knave, Ford, her husband, hath the finest mad devil of jealousy in him, Master Brook, that ever governed frenzy, I tell you, though. He beat me grievously in the shape of a woman, <laughs> for in the shape of a man, Master Brook, I fear not Goliath with a weaver's beam, because I also know life is a shuttle. Mm. I am in haste. Go along with me. I'll, I'll tell you all, Master Brooks, since I plucked geese, played truant, and whipped top, I know not what t'was to be beaten till lately. Uh -huh. Oh, follow me. 
I'll tell you strange things on this knave Ford on whom tonight I will be revenged, <laughs> and I will deliver his wife <laughs> into your hand. <laughs> follow, follow. Ooh, strange things in hand. Boom, boom, boom. Master Brooke, boom, 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 boom. follow. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Come, come. We'll couch the castle ditch till we see the light of our fairies. Remember, Sun Slender, my uh, I forsooth, I have spoken with her, and we have a nay word how to know one another. I come to her in white and cry, Mum. She cries, Budget, and by that we know one another. That's good too, but what needs either your mum or her budget? The white will decipher her well enough. It hath struck 10 o'clock. The night is dark. Light and spirits will become it well. Heaven prosper our sport. No man means evil but the devil, and we shall know him by his horns. <laughs> That's a way, follow me. Mercer Doctor, my daughter is in green. When you see your time, take her by the hand, away with her to the dreamery, and dispatch it quickly. Go before into the park. We two must go together. I know what I have to do. Adieu. Fare you well, sir. My husband will not rejoice so much at the abuse of Falstaff as he will chafe at the doctor's marrying my daughter. But it's no matter. Better a little chime and a great deal of heartbreak. Where is Nan now and her troop of fairies and the Welsh, Welsh devil Hugh? There will couch in a pit hard by Hearn's Oak with obscured lights, which at the very instant of false deaths at our meeting, they will at once display to the night. I cannot choose but amaze him. If he be not amazed, he will be mocked. If he be amazed, he will every way be mocked. We'll betray him finally. Against such losers and their lechery, those that betray them do no treachery. The hour draws near. To the oak, to the oak. Trib, Trib fairies, come and remember your parts. Be bold, I pray. Follow me into the pit and when I give the watch, words do as I bid you, come, come Trib, Trib. Windsor bell hath struck 12. The minute draws on. Now the hot blooded gods assist me. <laughs> oh. Remember Jove, thou wast a bull for thy Europa. Love set on my horns. <laughs> oh, powerful love that in some respects makes a beast a man. <sighs> In some others, a man, a beast. You were also, Jupiter, a swan for the love of Lida. Oh, omnipotent love, omnipotent love. Oh, how near the god drew to the complexion of a goose. A fault done first in the form of a beast. Oh, Jove, a beastly fault. And then another fault in the semblance of a fowl. Think on it, Jove, a foul fault. When gods have hot backs, what shall poor men do? For me, I am here a Windsor stag. And the fattest, I think, in the forest. <laughs> oh, send me a cool rut time, Jove, or else who can blame me to piss my tallow? Oh, who comes here? My doe? John, art thou there, my dear, my male dear? My doe with the black scut. <laughs> Let the sky rain potatoes. Let it thunder to the tune of green sleeves. 
Hail kissing comfits and snow or no gears. Let there come a tempest of provocation. I will shelter me here. Mistress mm. Page has come with me, sweetheart. <gasps> Divide me like a bribed buck, each a haunch. <laughs> I will keep my sides to myself, my shoulders for the fellow of this walk, and my horns, I bequeath your husbands. <laughs> Am I a woodman, huh? <laughs> Speak I like Hearn the hunter? <laughs> hmm. Why now is Cupid a child of conscience? <laughs> he makes restitution as I am a true spirit. Welcome. Maybe climbing on rainbows, but baby, here goes. Dreams there for those who sleep. Life is for us to keep. And if you're wondering what this song. Should this be? Away! Away! And I bring it. Ah! Oh, I think the devil would not have me damned, lest the oil that's in me should set hell on fire. He would never have crossed me thus. Fairies black, gray, green, and white. You moonshine revelers in shades of night. You orphan heirs of fixed destiny. Attend your office and your quality. Choir hobgoblin, make the fairy oys. Elves list your names, silence you airy toys. Cricket to Windsor chimney shalt thou leap, where fires thou find'st unraked and hearths unswept. There pinch the maids as blue as bilberry. Your radiant queen hates sluts and sluttery. They are fairies. He that speaks to them shall die. I'll wink and couch. No man their works must I. Where's Mead? Go you and where find a maid? That ere she sleep and thrice her prayer said, raise up the organs of her fantasy. Sleep she as sound as, as careless infancy. But those that sleep and think not on their sins, Pins them, arms, legs, backs, shoulders, sides, and shins. About, about, search Windsor Castle elves within and out. Strew good luck, elves, on every sacred room, that it may stand still to the perpetual doom. In state as wholesome as in state is fit, worthy the owner and the owner it. Several chairs of order look you scour with the juice of balm and every precious flower. Each fair installment coat and several crest with loyal blaze and evermore be blessed. And nightly meadow fairies look you sing like to the goddess compass in a ring. The expressure that it bears, green let it be, more fertile fresh than all the field to see. And honey so qui molly pensy right in emerald tufts flowers purple blue and white like sapphire pearl and rich embroidery buckled below fair knighthood's bending knee fairies use flowers for their charactery away disperse but till tis one o'clock our dance of custom round about the oak of her and the hunter let us not forget pray you lock in hand Yourselves in order set and 
20 glowworms shall our lanterns be to guide our measure round about the tree. Stay. I smell a man in Middle Earth. Heavens defend me from that Welsh fairy, lest he transform me to a piece of cheese. Vile worm, thou wast overlooked even in thy birth. With the trial fire touch me his finger end. If he be chaste, the flame will back descend. But if corrupted, he will start. It is the flesh of a corrupted heart. A trial, come. Come, this would take fire. Uh, Sir Hugh. <laughs> so he's cool. I am in fantasy. I am lost in luxury. Lost in my bloody fire. Kindled with a chaste desire. To bear with your fire. That is hard. Starlight moonshine me out. If you fire, then hearts make the smile. As thoughts of the fire, fire. Nay, <laughs> do not fly. I think we've watched you now. Will none but her and the hunter save your turn? I pray you come, hold up the jest no higher. Now, good Sir John, how like you, Windsor wives. <laughs> See you these, husband? Do not these fair yokes become the forest better than the town? Now, sir, who's a cuckold now? Master Brook, Falstaff's a knave, a cuckoldy knave. Here are his horns, Master Brook. And Master Brook, he hath enjoyed nothing of Fords but his buck basket, his cudgel, and twenty pounds of money, which must be paid to Master Brook. His horses are ar arrested for it, Master Brook. <laughs> Sir John. We have had ill luck. We could never meet. I will never take you for my love again, but I will always count you, my dear. I do begin to perceive that I am made an ass. Aye, <laughs> and an ox, too. Both the proofs are extant. <laughs> and these are not fairies? I, I was three or four times in the thought that they were not fairies, and yet the guiltiness of my mind, the sudden surprise of my powers, <laughs> drove the grossness of the foppery into uh, received belief, <laughs> in despite of the teeth of all rhyme and reason, that they were fairies. <laughs> See now how wit may be made a jack o' lent when tis upon ill employment. Sir John, serve God and leave your desires, and, and fairies will not pinch you. <laughs> well said. Fairy you. <laughs> and leave you your jealousies too, I pray you. I will never mistrust my wife again till thou art able to woo her in good English. Oh, have I laid my brain in the sun and dried it that it once mattered to prevent such gross overreaching as this? Am I riddled with a Welsh go to? Shall I have a coxcomb of Frias? Oh, it is time I were choked with a piece of toasted cheese. A uh, cheese is not good to give potter. Your belly is all potter, man. 
cease and putter? Have I lived to stand at the taunt of one that makes fritters of English? Oh, this is enough to be the decay of lust and late walking through the realm. Why, Sir John, do you think though we would have thrust virtue out of our hearts by the head and shoulders and have given ourselves without scruple to hell that ever the devil could have made you our delight? What? Yeah. What? A hodge pudding? A bag of flax? A puffed man? Old, cold, uh, withered. And intolerable entrails. <laughs> and one that is as slanderous as Satan. Oh, and as poor as Job. And wicked as his wife. <laughs> and given to, to fornications and to taverns and sack and wine and, and methaglins, yeah, and dr to drinkings and swearings and starings, pribbles, prattles. Well, I am your theme. Yes, you have the start of me. I am dejected. I am not able to answer the Welsh flannel. Ow. Ignorance itself is a plummet o'er me. Ugh. Use me as you will. Mary, sir, we'll bring you to Windsor, to one master Brooke, oh. <laughs> that you have cousined of Money to whom you should have been a panda over and over that you have suffered, I think, to repay that money will be a biting uh, affliction. Oh, you be cheerful, knight. Thou shalt eat a posset tonight at my house, where I will desire thee to laugh at my wife that now laughs at thee. Till her master slender hath married her daughter. Mm, doctors doubt that. If Anne Page be my daughter, she is by this Dr. Kaiser's wife. Slender? Whoa, Father Page! Oh, <laughs> son! How now? How now? Son, have you dispatched? Dispatched? I'll make the best in Gloucestershire. No on it. I would, would I were hanged law else. Of what, son? I came yonder at Eton to marry Mistress Anne Page, and she's a great lubbery boy. If it had not been in the church, I would have swinged him, or he should have swinged me. If I did not think it had been Ann Page, would I might never stir, and tis a postmaster's boy. Uh, upon my life, then, you talk the wrong... What? Tell me that! I think so when I took a boy for a girl. If I had been married to him for all he was in woman's apparel, I would not have had him. Why, this is your own folly. Did not I tell you how you should know my daughter by her garments? I went to her in white and cried mum, and she cried budget, as Anne and I had appointed, and yet it was not Anne, but a postmaster's boy. <sniffs> Good George, be not angry. I know of your purpose, turn my daughter into green, and indeed she is now with a doctor at the deanery, and they're married. <laughs> Where is Mistress Page? <clears throat> By God, I am cousined. I have married a garçon, a boy. Un cousin. By God, a boy. It is not Anne Page. By God, I am cousined. Why? Did you take her in green? I, by God, and it is a boy. <sighs> by God, I'll raise all Windsor. This is strange. Who has got the right, Anne? Oh, my heart misgives me. Here comes Master Fenton. Pardon, good father. Oh, Master Fenton. Pardon, good father. Pardon, good mother. Now, mistress, 
How chance you went not with Master Slender? And why weren't you not with Master Doctor, maid? You do amaze her. The truth, hear the truth of it. You would have married her most shamefully, where there was no proportion held in love. The truth is, she and I, long since contracted, are now so sure that nothing can dissolve us. The offense is holy that she has committed, and this deceit loses the name of craft, of disobedience, or unjudious title, since therein she doth evitate and shun a thousand irreligious cursed hours which forced marriage would have brought upon her. Stand not amazed, here is no remedy. In love, the heavens themselves do guide the state. Money buys lands, and wives are sold by fate. I am glad. Mm. I am glad, <laughs> a glad one, though you have taken a special stand to strike at me, <laughs> that your arrow hath glanced. <laughs> well, what remedy? Ha, Fenton, heaven give thee joy. What cannot be eschewed must be embraced. When night dogs run, all sorts of deer are chased. <laughs> well, I will muse no further. Mm. Master Fenton, heaven give you many, many merry days. Good husband, let us every one go home and laugh the sport over by a country fire. Sir John and all. Let it be so, Sir John. To Master Brooke, you yet shall hold your word, for he tonight shall lie with Mistress Ford. Awesome, guys. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you. <laughs> and so do I. <laughs> Arthur Brown. Yep. I am dying that. Oh my god. I'll be Rebecca. Yay! That was I'll so fun. Good job, everyone. That was so good. Yeah. A lot of that. This is probably the That's earliest we finished ever. I know, right? Woo! Oh my god, yeah. it's 9 30. Oh, that's amazing. That was great. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. Thanks so much for doing this and, and keeping it alive two and a half weeks later. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, man. <laughs> y'all were cracking me up. Oh my gosh. It was just brilliant there at the end there. All y'all are just amazing. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, any last thoughts or comments or anything? I'm sure that <laughs> Nicole will get all this put together and posted soon. No, thank you. It was fun. It was lots of fun. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. A lot of fun. <laughs>